On the Chatham Bulletin Board, one parent of an AIG child had mentioned that uh, they got the feeling from, from a teacher that their gifted child would, would do just fine. What do you say when you hear somebody say something like that? It breaks my heart. I hear that a lot. And I hear it a lot from not just parents, but from teachers. I mean, from teachers telling parents. Um, and I've also heard uh, from teachers who say to parents, well, every parent thinks their child is gifted. That too breaks my heart because it is not accurate. And the other thing that's in place in this country is when we don't have standardized criteria for identifying at a, in a wide range of ways and we limit it, then children are identified maybe in one district to be gifted and then if they move they may not be identified in the next district as gifted. Or they may actually be identified at a certain age in the district and then uh, as they move up the ladder the parent may be told, well your child is no longer gifted. All of those are great concerns that need to be um, looked at carefully and teachers and professionals need to be very careful in the way they talk to parents about this because uh, it is not our role to tell parents that their child will be just fine, just like any child. When a child is not taught based on their own needs um, at a level that will help them grow, then we're doing a great disservice as teachers and professionals. We should be just like any professional in the medical field. If a child is on a certain path uh, of learning, then we need to make sure that child is growing in that process, regardless of what their level is, what their need is. And we can only do that if we truly are trained in a, the most professional way to understand children and their needs at all levels. What are some of the components of the, what are some of the best components of, of the AIG plans that you've seen out there or objectives? Do you have any specific ones that come to mind? I don't uh, right now because I don't see those plans, but the districts that I've visited, I know that there are some that really work hard to meet the needs of their gifted children. I know that Wake County has uh, a number of programs uh, that I know better than most. But one of the exciting things for me as I've traveled is to see that more and more of the districts are starting nurturing programs and K programs, K2 programs, where they're really working to try to teach children at higher levels and to identify them earlier. Uh, most districts have not identified children until they're in the third grade. And by then, you've got a lot of precocious children who have kind of fallen through the cracks and uh, we've been limited in giving them what they really needed. So I'm excited to see that nurturing all children, starting it earlier, is something that I see as expanding now across the state, and I hope we'll see more of that. What exactly do you mean when you say a nurturing program? That's where you really start working with kindergarten, first and second grade children on looking at the best practices in gifted methodologies where you really differentiate and give them high level um, activities and strategies and start looking at content and vocabulary and um, writing and letting them get into higher level exercises so that you're stretching their minds. And in our project um, that we're working on right now, we've developed curriculum units that are really high level and aligned to high level standards in the standard course of study and expanding the standard course of study because like any standard course of study, that's all it is and it's not the maximum. It's a basic course of study and for gifted children or children who are very precocious, you need to expand that, enrich it and enlarge it to be much bigger and better and higher for them to achieve and to not be bored. And all children, actually, all children, regardless of their levels, need to be engaged at high level interests uh, because um, no matter what 
their potential is, if they aren't engaged around their interest, around something that uh, is high level in content, it's so easy for them just to turn it off. And they also need to be, at an early age, talking and writing and discussing, not just sitting and listening to a teacher talk to them. So your nurturing programs aren't looking at meeting the minimums, they're, they're looking, looking at, at, at reaching, at, the reaching the for the maximum. higher levels, reaching for the maximum. Um, in one of the papers you co-authored, you mentioned that we've gone, or we, we're, we've gone from a 20, 20th century to 21st century economy where we've gone from an industrial age to, to where not, we're not necessarily producing products, but we're, we're producing ideas. Um, can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Well, I think uh, the century we're in now, the 21st century, is one about innovation and new ideas to solve complex problems. And we've got to change our educational system so that all people within that system, from the top to bottom, superintendents, teachers, all staff, have a different mission. And that mission is to be constant learners to be learners in a global world, and to be in an understanding of how all children can learn and can reach that potential. And instead of lowering the standards, we should be raising them for all children, and all teachers, and all administrators, so that the standards in university training programs should keep up the pace with learning and innovation and what's going on in the business world. 